something which is just not to do with what you can measure from the physical and material things that you see. Who said you get married right now? Huh? You got three brothers older than you. You wait in the queue. Real intelligence is a man who can look at the past and the future, assess it properly and know where he is. It's like you got nice, nice new sofas. Yeah, yeah, nice. But you know, deep inside, it's like they got new sofas. <laughs> Justin Bieber's coming. I feel so what? <laughs> but Imam, please, you know, can you give me a dua or something? <laughs> the guy wants to like pray and blow, man. I've known of non-Muslims that come. They'll come a second time and say, "Give me more of that. That thing, that thing that you sing." Shaitan wants us to believe in the present, in material things, and his matrix is that he fools you in not thinking about the future. Firstly, brothers and sisters who are listening, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's nice to come all the way over here, and the brothers told me before I came, and I said, What's the subject? and they pulled out this matrix thing yeah, with three guys in the background. I don't know if it was three of you posing there for that thing, I don't know, Allahu Alam. But it was nice to see that I guess it's a way of getting you youngsters inside and you kind of think, yeah, this is it, we're going to now listen to the fourth part of the matrix. So, I'm not here to give you a whole download on a whole movie or whatever, but I'm here to talk about what it means to us in this world, and there is a matrix that is around us. There is a matrix. What is, what is that? And there's a matrix on the good side, there's a matrix on the bad side. Meaning that there is a side in this world, you know, you, you are, if, if you're of those people, you will understand that there's a way of looking at the world which makes you a true Muslim and one that can see with the help of Allah Azza wa Jal. What, what, does, what did Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, Ittaqu firasat al mu'min. He said, beware of the insight and the ability of a believer having an inner look at things. فَإِنَّهُ يَنْظُرُ بِنُورِ اللَّهِ Because he sees through the light of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So there are people who actually on this earth, on this earth, who live on this earth, whom Allah has given them firasa, Allah has opened, opened things to them and He doesn't do it to everyone. But at the same time, he doesn't always open it for them as well. But not only them, we as believers, even if you don't have this firasa inside you, you know, this, this talk is for you as well. Why? Because the Qur'an that has been given to us, this Qur'an is our way of looking at the entire world. And at the same time, you've got certain people in this world who, who have been sort of given such an impression of the world, that they don't see anything be, be beyond the material that they see, the material that they have. Now, just to give you a quick thing, that in the time of uh, Suleiman alayhi salatu salam, uh, he heard of this queen, Queen Sheba. And she was a very powerful queen. She had a whole army of jinns that were under her. And Suleiman alayhi salam also had a whole army of jinns under him. Now, it was going to become a big battle if one of these did not, you know, subdue. If, if Bilqis wasn't going to subdue, it was going to become a big battle. But anyway, long story short, he sends a letter to her through the hoopoo bird, and then in the end, she consults her jinns, and they say, look, you know, we're ready to fight, but it's up to you, you know, your royal highness, what you want to do. So she says, look, you know, fighting will only cause corruption and bloodshed and so on, and... I want to try and test this individual. Let me try and, you know, he says he's a messenger. And I know that messengers, if they're given a gift, then a messenger doesn't, you know, ex if he's given a gift, a personal gift, like almost in a form of a bribery, like, you know, calm down coolly, take it easy, you know, don't take it so hard on me. Okay, so if I give him a nice gift, hopefully, you know, we'll see eye to eye. And she sends that gift, and when it comes to Suleiman, he says, أَتُمِدُّونَنِي بِمَالٍ فَمَا آتَانِي اللَّهُ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا آتَاكُمْ You're trying to bribe me with some kind of wealth, what Allah has given me is much better. He says, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to get my army ready right now, 
and if and, you know, I, I would bring them right down to our kingdom by them being you know lowly in front of us and the news is basically going back to Bilqis and she understands and she says you know what let, 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 let me go straight to Suleiman and let me show you know that I'm submitting to him but let me take it easy so she's on her way and before she can get to Suleiman salam's uh, quarters he sends he, he he's in his uh, quarters and he says who's going to bring me her throne uh, and and you know what in the end one of the one of them brings the throne with the blink of an eye in front of him and what he does is he want, he finds out that this woman see the hoopoo bird told him that this woman Bilqis and a whole a whole kingdom they worship the sun they see the sun coming rising up they worship the sun throughout the day when it sets they worship the sun you know when it's rising when it's at the peak when it's setting they, they're worshiping the sun so he wants to now make her believe in Allah how does he make this woman believe in Allah does he just say you know Bilqis I am Suleiman I am the Rasul of Allah and here's a book I've got from before and you better believe look how truthful this is and is this the way to give dawah to this woman who's a queen in her own right? Is it the way to give her dawah that he should bring her and try and, try and sort of force her? You can't do that. You can't force anyone right? in religion. Allah said in the whole Quran, La ikraha fid deen. So how is he going to make this woman see the truth? So what does he do? He builds a test for her. He prepares this before Bilqis even arrives. So Bilqis comes, she sees her throne. You know, he says, do you recognize this? And she says, Ka'annahu hu. She says, as if it's the one I have. Alright, so already she, see, she sees that this man's got some serious power. He's sent someone over there to her kingdom, brought this whole, you know, whole massive throne and presented it in front of her. He changed it a little. So she said, it's as if it's the one that I've got. Anyway, he then takes her to a chamber, this large room, okay? This large room or hallway. When they open the door, they've got to go through this to another room. When she opens the door, she sees that there's water in this room. Shallow water, but there's water. And she's got to go through this room to the next part that Suleiman is then going to take her. So as she's going to step inside, she lifts her garment up slightly so that it doesn't get wet. But when she puts her foot on the ground, La ilaha illallah, it's glass. It was so clear that the glass was cleaned and polished so well, and it was made so magnificently above this water that she didn't even see the glass. Guys, do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever seen like, you know, you go to a building and there's some glass doors there and people don't realize the glass door, they walk and <laughs> boom. You ever seen that? You're laughing, you've seen it. Yeah, you know, you've not just seen it, you, you use the one. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is that she did not realize it was so clean. So she put her foot down and Sulaiman straight away said that this is glass. And there and then, Bilqis, this clever, intelligent woman, realizes and she does toba and she says, Ya Allah, what have I done? What have I done? Her iman came straight and there and then and Sulaiman did the whole test to make her a believer. How? She looked at this magnificent work and she said, Where have I been? She said, Rabbi inni zalam tu nafsi. My Lord, I, I have wronged myself. Why? Because all my life I've been looking at a sun that is visible to me and that material world has taken my grasp and taken a whole, my whole mind away. That this is the biggest planet I see every day, the strongest, the one that gives us all energy. So that is the one that I've been worshipping, not realizing that between the sun and myself and between your creation and us and between the heavens and the earth and between anything between anything Allah says what? وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you are وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرًا Allah is well watching whatever you are doing Now she didn't see the invisible God she didn't see the invisible God, 
but she saw the visible sun. So she started to worship whatever was material in front of her eyes, whatever was what she could actually see and visualize. So the same way she couldn't see the glass, but she saw the water and she reacted to the water. The water was visible, but the glass wasn't visible. So she got the message. That Sulaiman is trying to tell her and give a da'wah that don't just go with what you can see. And la ilaha illallah, this is a big message for the youth and for us who are growing up. And especially in this part of the western world. Because the whole western philosophy is based upon what you can assess and what you can do. And in the science classes, sometimes they laugh at you saying there's a God. And sometimes you sit there, you say, you think, what's he talking about? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, you know, the Molly Sahib said that there is a lie, you know, the Molly Sahib said that. But this guy, I can't find an argument to give to him to prove Allah. My friend, you try and use every visible thing that you want to try and prove Allah. There will always be an argument against it. Where there's heads, there's tails. Okay. Iman is something which goes beyond that. And that's what Bilqis understood. That Iman is something which is just not to do with what you can measure from the physical and material things that you see. And she understood that. But I'm not saying it's all that, because guys, if you want any physical, the greatest physical and, and tangible proof that Allah exists, it's the Qur'an. How? How? Let me explain to you. You can't just take this to the underground tube and say, hey guys, I find a proof. Or to the science class, hey guys, the proof of this is in many different ways. The biggest one is that Allah Azza wa Jal has challenged the whole of mankind. From the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for 1430 something years, he has challenged every single year, every day the challenge is up, every day the challenge is there, every week, every month, every year is there. And not only to the Arabs, he challenged it to the Indians, the Russians, the Australians, and the Americans, and the Europeans, and whatever you are, the Africans, the challenge is to everybody, which is what? Which is that, look, I'm going to create this book on the earth. And you've got books as well on the earth. And when you have books on the earth, you copy one book from another book. Because in the days before, they never had the printing system. True or not? Did they have the printing system? Guys, you living in this world or you living somewhere else? Did they have the printing system before? Yes or no? No, no thank you. You're awake, guys. Yeah, probably missing your Saturday night out somewhere, you know? Chicken and chips, you know? So... They used to copy this, copy this. Now, you know when you copy from one book to another book, what happens? You make errors, you make mistakes. Okay? And not only that, even if you print books, like for like, there's easily a printer. If he has got a challenge, the printer who prints millions of books, he's got a challenge. Can you change Al-Quran? So all he has to do is like, yeah, all right, yeah, I add a dot here, like, you know, uh, take a few dots out there, yeah, um, just delete that part there, yeah, let's print it. If any printer wanted to do that, you got thousands across the world, printers, major publishers who could do that. In fact, they've tried so many times to try and change this. But you can't change it. You just can't, it's impossible. That's one big miracle. But I'm not going to just keep it to that. The miracle of the Qur'an is in many ways. That's just one element of it. Another big miracle of the Qur'an is that this Qur'an for 1400 years has always given meaning to every single context it goes through. Amazing! You say, no, well that's a book. Well tell me this year, how many revisions has the Bible gone through? Because if you bring a Bible today for me, to me, a thousand years old, you won't even be able to understand it. And even if you go 400 years ago, people are like, nah, I don't want that language, you know, to understand it. Thou shalt go to thy rising place. Thou shalt... You know, it's, it's wonderful English for that era, but if it, if it basically never changed, then people of this time wouldn't be able to re relate to the Bible. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Yes, and then now you've got so many different ones, so many different Bibles, so many different versions. In fact, no scripture on the earth, 
No scripture on the earth that claims to be from a God, except that you've got many different versions. There's only one that has only one type, one reading, one reading, and that's Al-Quran. Not only that, this is just two things are presented. There's no part of any scripture, of any rhyme, of any place, of anything in the whole of the world that you can carry on saying again and again and again and again and again without getting bored. Even children, children love to repeat. Yes or no guys, can you tell me? Yes. Yeah? Children love to repeat. If you make those children say, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Or one, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Okay, guys, listen, don't get carried away, yeah? It's only nursery rhyme, guys. Cheer up, man. <laughs> then I let it go because it beat my finger so. Now kids will come home and they'll sing that. And they'll sing it 20 times, they'll sing it 40 times. But tell me, how many of you still sing it today? Tell me, go on. Put your hands up. That guy just went like that. <laughs> There's one guy that sings it, guys. He's an old guy with a beard, yeah? He just went like that. <laughs> Nobody sings it. Isn't it amazing? Kids love watching the same thing 20 times. You give them a movie, they like it, they want to watch it 20 times. You're like sick of that movie. You're like, don't you dare, t- don't you dare turn that movie again. It's doing my head in. Because I've seen it so many times, it's like I sleep and I see it. But the kids want to do it again and again. But even kids can't do it. Adults can't do it. Adults love the national anthem. Yes or no? You know, patriotic people. Come on, guys. They love you on... Come on, guys, man. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I understand, I understand. You've got a national anthem for your country. People love it. Yeah, Pakistan or Bangladesh, whatever it is. Amarashunar Bangla. Amitubai Kotobalobashi. Whatever it is that they want to say about the national anthem, you tell that guy, okay, Giza, you love it, you're patriotic, I want you to do one thing, which is what? Sing it 20 times a day. I'm telling you, if the guy sings it 20 times a day, yeah, he's going to, by the time he's finished, yeah, for a good few days, he's going to be, I'm going to do it. The guy's going to go mental. Any song that comes, people love songs, songs come out, songs go out. You know, sometimes a song comes, people are downloading on iTunes and they're downloading on, you know, whatever it is, your, your mega stores, I don't know what it is, man, they got out there, yeah? But they've got ways, yeah, of plugging it into here and they want to hear it again, hear it again, hear it again, hear it. When it first comes out, yeah, these guys are on it like 10 times a day, 20 times a day, they can't get enough. By the time you go to the end of the month of the release of the song, by the time the end of the month comes, they'll hear it probably once a day. By the time the second month has gone, they're probably like hearing it every other day or every third day or something. By the time the third month has gone, it's like, nah, I don't want to listen to that. Now I want something new, something new, every time something new. Yeah? You tell me this, yeah? We as, as young people, we as seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, we now are 20 year old, 25, 20, you know, 26, now 30, 35, now, now 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 70, the eight-year-old, whatever range you go to, we every single day, every day of our lives, either we're reciting or we hear it and we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Tell me with Iman who was bored of that. Yet every day Fajr four times, Zuhar about ten or twelve times, or if you're behind the Imam, okay, about eight times, because you don't pray sometimes behind the Imam, some do, some don't, okay, that's fine. Asr about four times, Maghrib about another five, seven times, Isha about a nine or eleven, depending how many rakats you do, twelve, fifteen, seventeen, whatever times you're doing it. And then if somebody recites it again, you can hear it again and again. And every day of your life, every week of your life, every month of your life, you never got to the third month and said, I'm bored. You never got to the third week and said, I can't do this again. You never got to the third year of your life and said, I want something different. You never did that. Why? Because Iman is something Allah has given. This is a proof that this book is something 
out of this world. You understand? Out of this world. And the other thing is, some imam comes here and he says, you know, he might not have the best, best, best sort of voice. So he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. You should listen to it. You're not like, ah oh, man, I thought it. I don't, I want to hear, you know, super. It's going to be super. The way I used to say, one, two, three, four, five, once I could a fish alive. The way they sing something and it gets you excited with your national anthem or whatever it is, I want to hear like that. No. When an imam comes here, any imam anywhere, who reads it in a monotonous voice, tone, you still love it. When they say it in a beautiful tone, you still love it. When you want to say it with a melody to reflect your sadness, you still love it. And you can do it yourself. And you can reflect, you can relate to the Qur'an in that way. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Imagine someone sad and they want to relate to the read Fatiha in that way. That's fine. And somebody else Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een You can read it like that if you want to and you relate to it subhanallah The thing is Where on an earth have you got any song, any tune that can be read in so many ways that you lose count? Anyway, tell me, with, with Iman, any guy, this is my challenge to humanity and you guys should go and give da'wah like this. Where in the world is this? Tell me. That you can go, you can say, one, two, three, four, five, once I caught a fish. Like three, four, five, what are you like? like okay, I'll say it like that then. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, like, how are you going to sing something like, twinkle, twinkle, little star, and then, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Like, you're like, what are you doing? You just spoil the whole rhythm. I what's wrong with you? You understand? You take any song, my friend. You take any tune and you put it out of his tune, sing in a different way, it don't work. But the Quran is the only book. As long as you observe the tajweed and you stop where it tells you stop, you prolong it where it tells you to prolong, and you can choose your tune wherever you want, that's a miracle that everyone can, can relate to it and, and read it and still not be bored of it. Yes or no, guys? Is it an Iman booster, yes or no? Yes. Okay. That's just three. If you look at the Qur'an and its meaning, I haven't even got to the meaning yet. This is just tune. Is it amazing? How many of you understand Arabic? Tell me, put your hands up. There's a good 100, 150 of you here. Put your hands up. Who understands Arabic? Put your hands up. Right, okay. You don't understand Arabic. But you still find it nice, yes or no? If I say to you, Choing king pine wan chong ho mila po tu pi ka we laugh at that ping kong pong chong ho hey don't laugh my 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 song man ai kong han ji ho and the thing is you the thing is you're laughing yeah you can't relate much to a song or something, an anthem, whatever it is, that you don't understand much. Okay, you might, you might respect it, that's fine, but you can't relate to it much. We've been saying the, and reading the Qur'an for our lives, most of us, without even understanding it. Okay, I'm not saying don't understand it. Of course, go ahead and understand the Qur'an, read the tafsir. But when you read the Arabic or you listen to the Arabic, you don't understand it. But yet it's so beautiful. I would like you to do one thing if you want to ever give da'wah, and I've done this with non-Muslims before, and you can do it anytime you want. Just take a CD of a good qari that you like, and just give it to him as a gift. Say, go home, just play this. That's it. Seriously. You don't know how to give da'wah. You can't even, you know, like read like those qaris. That's fine. Just give it, give a CD. Tell him to go home. Just put it on. Relax. Just put it on. You know, I've known of non-Muslims that come, they'll come a second time and say, give me more of that. That thing, that thing that you sing. Because it's soothing. It's soothing. La ilaha illallah. Why? 
my brothers, because this is a miracle. Anyway, let's get back to Bilqis and Suleiman alayhi salam. There's tangible thing, but you've got to know that there are intangible, unseen things that govern our world. And the thing is, my friends, is that if you carry on going with the tangible the things that you see, what do kids see these days? What do youngsters see these days? They see the TV. And on the TV, there's a guy that's got so many rings here that his arms are aching to lift them up. He's like, yeah, I made you like this, or whatever, yeah? He's got so many chains around here, right? That he's probably thinking, man, man, I wish I could take this off. It's probably hurting him. You know, think about it. It's how many chains and how many things. Anyway, maybe it doesn't hurt him. But the thing is, he's, got, he's made his life into what? He's made his life into girls and cars. And drugs in between. And he sells the drugs. And he gets the girls. And he gets the cars that he wants. And the youngsters see this on YouTube, on TV, whatever. And they think, man, I want to be like that. I want to knock my tooth far and put a gold tooth there. <laughs> Isn't that the ultimate thing, guys? Yeah? Get my teeth knocked out and put gold. So I want to smile. I smile money. But anyway, whether it's the gold tooth or not, yeah? Anyway, whether it's gold tooth or not, yeah? No, no disrespect to you guys, yeah? But anyway, they want the girls and they want the cars. What they don't see is, guys, they don't see their past and they don't see their future. My friends, intelligence is not when you just see and you think of what you think and you know what you know. That's not intelligence. A man can go out there and he can sell drugs. And a man can go out there and he can speak so well and convince the guy that he needs the drugs. A man can be intelligent and smart enough to go and not even take the drug but to sell the drugs and to make loads of dosh. And G's, they call it G's and Dosh from the ash that he sells, yeah? He makes all of that and he thinks I'm so clever, man. I'm so clever. But he doesn't see the past and he doesn't see the future, especially the future. Intelligence is not that. Intelligence isn't that you just go out there and you're able to just smart, you know, just outsmart people with your words. That's not intelligence. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith a Muslim said near the end of time. There will be people who, from who amana has gone, trust has gone. And it will remain in, inside like a piece of a dot, just a dot or something. That's how it will remain. In fact, it will get so bad that people will not be able to find trustworthy people. They'll say, you know, out of this whole community, so and so you can trust, so and so you can trust, so and so you can trust. They will count them on the fingers of Allah. Akbar. True. Is, is this happening today or not? Tell me this. Yes. Happening today or not? Tell me, tell me this, guys. Yes. La ilaha illallah. That you can count trustworthy people on your fingers. That's how few they are in a whole community. And then the Prophet ﷺ said in the same hadith of Muslim, that there will be people at that time who won't have any iman in their heart, but people will refer to them and say, Ma aqala, ma alfara, ma ajlada. They will say, what a clever man. What a clever individual. What a successful individual. Because the guy's got the gift of the gap, you understand? The guy can talk. The guy can walk. The guy can talk. The guy can convince you that you, you got to be behind him. He's just everything, man. Man, when the guy goes on Facebook, he gets so many likes. Instagram, I heard today somebody said to me that this new thing, Instagram, people are on. If you're on it, that's good. Guys, use it for da'wah, yeah, use it for good things, yeah. But then, you know, there's a phrase he told me, and I thought, la ilaha illallah. He said, there are some people, yeah, if they were to delete their Instagram account, or if they were to delete their Facebook account, yeah, they'd probably just die. Because of loneliness. The whole world is in Instagram, and the whole world is in Facebook. I'm thinking, what a sad life, man. Just because you have a Facebook account, don't make your whole world a Facebook. Don't make your whole world an Instagram and whatever else. You don't, don't do that, guys. There's a real world out here. Anyway, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, they will, they will look at those individuals and they'll say, what a clever and successful individual. When no iman is in the heart, 
Not every single iman. What does that mean? That means that in this dunya you look at them, you think, man, the guy's got the, he's got the house, he's got the car, he's got the, you know, he's got the business, he's made the money, he's made the billions or the millions or the multi millions. And look at me, oh, I wish I, I wish I could just be like him. That's that's what's going on in most people's heads because they only see what they see. But my friend, you want to ask this question? Yeah. Does the one who sells drugs see the aftermath of where he's going? Does he see that he's going to suddenly find himself? He might be a clean guy. Guys, don't, you know, everyone who goes into drugs, yeah? all these guys who go into drugs, they say, look, I'm going to remain clean. I'm not going to take it myself. I'm going to be smart enough to take, not take it myself. That's fine, my friend. But what you don't see is, in the world of drugs, it's a cutthroat situation. The same deal you're doing today and making 500 you know, bucks or 500 pounds, the, another guy's going to come and say to you that you better give it for 400. And it's cutthroat situation. And then it gets down to a 5 pound or 10 pound difference. And because of that, they start stabbing each other. You never saw that. You're clean. You never took drugs. You just gave it to others. You're clean as in you don't take it yourself. Not clean in terms of spoiling people's life. <laughs> That's a separate thing, yeah? But you're not taking in your own body, you've kept your body good, but you don't know for a little thing you've been done in. The guy who goes and sees a girl, or a girl who sees a boy, and that's what they see. That's it. That's my world. That's all I want. I just want him. And it's like, I want her. And the kind of time we're living in, some are saying, I want it. Do you understand guys? You don't understand, yeah? The way the world is going, some are saying, I want him. Some are saying, I want her. And some are saying, I want it. Why? And you're probably laughing now. You're probably laughing now. The way the world is going, my friends, and I'm not joking, I'm making a joke out of this. There will be, there has already been cases where people have got married to their pets. Already cases, real cases, people have got married to their pets. Some people have got married to the TV sets. Some people got married to a building. Some people have fallen in love with a the building. They come every day out there, they look at the building, look at the building. The building. It's, it's, a, it's a psychological disorder, but they look at a little building and they... And I'm saying this today, psychological order, yeah? If I say this in 30 years time, I might be taken to prison, brothers. You know what I'm saying, brothers? Because this is what, isn't it? The freedom of expression. Freedom of love. Freedom, freedom. Freedom. In the name of freedom, you can do what you want. So I'm being serious about here. I'm being serious. There are people soon enough. There's already, do you, I don't know if you're aware of this or not. There's already large groups of people across the world who are saying that they were born to love children. I hope you get the message. You know, maybe I love children, but I hope you get the message. Not the parental love, but the other kind of. There are groups of people on the earth who are now trying to legalize family members sleeping with another family member. And I won't go further, there are children that listen to this. I hope you get the message. There will be in 30, 40 years time, and I'm not making this up, there will be where people will actually just go ahead and do whatever they want with animals. There will be a time when Rasulullah has already told us it will get so bad that he said, Banu Israel, if a man was to approach his mother in an unlawful manner, in public, in front of others, then one of my people of my ummah will do the same. And guys, you don't even need to go outside of the Islamic world to, to do that. There are people within Islam who are saying all of this should be allowed from the Qur'an, La ilaha illallah. Now, what I'm trying to say to you guys is anyway, this guy, he looks at her, she looks at him. Okay, let's just come back to our world. Yeah, I don't want you to try start thinking about this gruesome future that we've got. Yeah, don't worry, inshallah. Even if we live that time, inshallah, we pray to Allah that he protects us. Inshallah, say inshallah. inshallah. Yeah. Don't freak out, guys. Don't freak out. Don't, don't, don't fall in love with the pillow tonight. Yeah. Anyway, he looks at her, she looks at him, and it's like, that's it. That's all they want. They don't see future. What do you mean by future? 
future is you know common sense they might be intelligent individuals some guys they are so intelligent at their exams don't get me wrong guys they can score three a stars three a's in their colleges they can get first degree honors degree they can get all of that but you know what what messes them up is they just can't get you know they just can't get the you know, that person out of their head they can't, they can't just go beyond that. They, can't, they, they mess up their exams because of that. They stop eating because of that. They stop sleeping because of that. Some guys, they're just dreaming, dreaming all the time. It's like, oh, when, when, when? Why not Allah? They come, they come to us Imams. I'm not just making this up. They come to us Imams and they come to all funny ways. Some say, you know, Imam, you know, I want to get married, whatever. And I say, look, guy, look, if it's written for you, inshallah, you know, Allah will... You know, make it happen, inshallah. Try, try, inshallah. Go to your parents and go to, you know. And they say, no, 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 but I've tried all of that. And some don't want to go to the parents. Okay, fine. It's like, okay, guy, listen, what's, what's wrong? What's the matter? It's like, you know, she, like, she wants to and I want to. But, you know, the parents are not agreeing with the culture. Or she's already got someone lined up for her. And this and that. It's like, look, listen, guy, listen, guy. I feel like I'm going to... Now, anyway, listen, guy, listen, guy, listen, guy. Listen, guy. Now, if she's meant for somebody else, and if it's just already written for her, then she's going to go somewhere else. But Imam, please, you know, can you give me a dua or something? <laughs> the guy wants to like pray and blow, man. Whew, whew. Some come honestly, come to us, and they want like something to be written, and they want something to like, you know, do some potion, magic, I don't know what they want to do, just to get her. I'm like, Giza, hold on, my friend, get hold on. Where are you going? And some others are like, you know, Imam, but, 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 I know all of that, but, but, I still want to. So, okay, look, if she can't really come to you, if she can't be yours, you've got to somewhere down the line just give up. You have to. You can't get everything you want in this world. It's like, but I'm going to die. <laughs> that's, that's the, almost like, you know, they don't say that, but it's almost like, you think, listen, guys, just wake up. This is the dunya. It's not Jannah. Wake up, you, if you can't get her or the girl, she can't get him. You know, the girls, they go to another extreme. They sit there, they roll up the sleeve, they take a sharp item and start cutting their wrist, cutting their hand, cutting here. <laughs> My hand's going to cry blood. It's like, they cut them, seriously, girls, sometimes girls have a crush on someone. They go crazy. And then something else, the, the media doesn't help. Because all he needs to do is just bring one guy out. And they're all like, ah! It's like, are you really intelligent girls? Seriously, are you really intelligent? You know, you think about it. There are thousands and thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of girls all going, ah! The guy's name, by the way, is Justin Bieber. <laughs> guy's name is Justin Bieber. He's, in, he's been in prison a few times. Anyway, Justin Bieber comes to one city and they're like, all the hotels are booked, seriously. I went to Norway and it's like, we couldn't even find a hotel to book. I think, what on earth has gone, gone wrong here? And they said, Justin Bieber's coming. I thought, so what? <laughs> Justin Bieber, well, everyone apparently, people are flying in just to see this guy. Wow, I mean, seriously. And the girls, I mean, if they really had intelligence, you know what they'd be thinking of is that, if there are hundreds and thousands of girls here that are after this one guy, okay, they're after this one guy, yeah. This girl seriously needs to go in front of the mirror, look inside and just say, seriously, how much of a chance have I got, yeah, to be all those girls, yeah, to Justin Bieber. And not only the non-hijab, is the hijab is some of them as well. He's like, ah, <laughs> and they all get like all bubbly and giggly. He's like, seriously, girl, you got no chance. Forget it. You'd be probably lucky even if a Muslim guy marries you. Looking for Justin Bieber. Seriously. And they go crazy for these, like one individual, this individual, they got a crush. It's like, if you ever can see the future, the future is what? If you, can, if you can accept the Qur'an, what does the Qur'an teach us? The Qur'an teaches us Qadr, a massive lesson, which is what? If it's not meant for you, you, there's no point of crying over it. There's no point of dying for it. Why are you dying for something that might not be meant for you? I remember once I went with my family to pick, up, pick, pick some strawberries. We went to pick strawberries. And my wife, my, wife, my three kids, we went in the summertime. 
you know, to a farm just to pick strawberries. It's a nice day, go out and do some of this. So as we're going, my wife is saying, you know, hurry up, hurry up, let's get, let's get there quickly, quickly, let's get there early, early, so that we can be the first to pick them up, you know, the juicy ones, everyone's going to take the juicy ones, you know, it's, it's on your mind, yeah? And I said to her, I said, take it easy. She said, no, let's hurry up. I said, take it easy. I said, the strawberries that are written for me and for you and the kids, nobody will be able to pick them up. Doesn't matter how many people walk past those strawberries that are in for me and you and the children, no one can pick them up. They won't even see it. Or even if they see it, they won't pick it. And even if they pick it, it will still end up in my mouth. Yes or no? And if it's not written for me, and I get there early, written for someone else, yeah, and I try and pick whatever I want, you know, some other guy's strawberries, I'm not going to pick them up. You understand? If I see it, uh, if I, if I might not see it, first thing. And if I do see it, I probably won't want to pick it. And even if I pick it, it'll end up in his mouth. Yes or no, guys? Yes. This is our Iman. This is, what te- this is the matrix of, of Iman. Which is, you see things with the Qadr of Allah. You just accept it. You accept it. The massive part of our Iman. Whoever rejects Qadr is not a Muslim. Very clear, hadith of Muslim. Uh, the first man... Uh, I think Ma'bad al-Juhani, he rejected Qadr, and the news came to Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu, and he said, tell, tell these people, أَنَّهُمْ بُرَآءُ مِنِّي وَأَنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْهُمْ Say that I am clear of them, I'm acquitted of them, and they are acquitted of me. Guys, our matrix of this world is through Iman, and we see things differently. We see, if we see, first thing is that, if you see someone, you're not supposed to just look like that, look like that, look like that, look anywhere you want, because the thing is, you can't even look in like that. Somewhere or another, you are going to fall in love somewhere. You're going to go, Ugh! and then what happens after that? You lose your senses. You're not supposed to just look like that. So that's the first thing that it teaches you. Second thing, if you've seen someone, then you go through the right means. And if you can get them, alhamdulillah. If you can't get them through nikah, then forget it. Go and find life somewhere else. That's dunya. If you see someone with wealth, you just gonna look at them and think, man, there, there are some people like this. I'm being serious about this here. Yeah? Some people, they've got a serious problem of jealousy. They look at anybody who's got more than them, and they come to someone's house here, yeah? they come inside. Acha, tumara paas ye, ne so far hai. Acha ji, bhoot hai, you know. It's like, you got nice, nice new sofas here, yeah, yeah, nice. But you know, deep inside, it's like, they got new sofas. <laughs> they got new sofas. Mm. <laughs> Let's sit down, yeah? The, the tea, cup of tea comes. And they look at the china cup. Both a chick up, And inside it's like. <laughs> Seriously. They come and see work done in your house. And if they could, yeah, they want to be suit man and just like beam out these lasers and blow the whole thing up. Because it's killing them inside. It's jealousy. And there are some people who walk back and they'll, they'll laugh, they'll smile at everything. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and when they're gone, they'll talk about you. They'll say, did you hear Johanna got who's Kajana? Oh, Malik Sava. You know Malik has got his... Sorry if your name is Malik, yeah. You guys are laughing. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, yeah. You know he's got a house there, yeah. You know him, yeah. How he make that money, yeah. How he make that... And how he get that nice bathroom, huh? Huh? How? It's like, what do you mean how? The guy steal it? Have you got evidence that he's stolen it? Have you got evidence that he's done something wrong? If you haven't, then shut your, shut your mouth up and just sit down and say, Alhamdulillah. This is what Islam teaches us, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us. You see something good in somebody else, say, Masha Allah, or say, Barakallahu feek. May Allah bless you in this. This is what we say as Muslims, and really mean it from your heart. And if, you, if you're in a good condition, Alhamdulillah. If you're in a bad condition, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. I praise Allah on every situa- for every situation I'm in. This is Islam, guys. Qana'a, you know, Qana'a, this is the matrix of this, this, this religion. Qana'a is, I am satisfied with whatever Allah has given me. This is the beauty of the believer. A believer with this Qana'a, with this contentment in his heart. Qana'a is contentment. If you've got Qana'a, you can see a man with a mansion. You say, may Allah bless you. You know, like the Allah that gave me a normal house, that same Allah 
uh, I was pleased to give you a mansion. The same Allah that was happy that I get a three bedroom house. That same Allah is happy that you get a seven big bedroom mansion. And I'm absolutely happy with what? With the taqseem of Allah, with how Allah distributes for his servants. That's a mu'min, that's a believer. You see a guy driving down the road with a, you know, a, 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 a nice, you know, a, a, a wonderful car. Give me, give me a name of a good car, guys. Ferrari. Ferrari, okay. okay. And another one? Bentley. Huh? Bentley. Bentley. <laughs> Forget Rolls Royce, man. It's gone out, man. Come on. The, the British are not making them like they used to make them. Sorry, man. I might oh, well, better take those words back, man. But be against British values. Like, you know, sorry. We like the Rolls Royce here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Ford cars. Anyway. The thing is, you say a Ferrari. The guy's got a Ferrari, the guy's got a Ferrari, fine. I've got a normal car, I've got a normal car, fine. Alhamdulillah, qana'a inside there, you don't mind. You see a man with a beautiful wife, more beautiful than you, you don't mind. Alhamdulillah, taqseem of Allah, how Allah distributes. Because the same Allah that gave him a better car, that gave him a better house, that gave him a better wife, yeah? Perhaps if you were in his shoes, he'd be looking at you and saying, I wish I was you. He might. Because he's like, man, in my house, he might, in his house, Allah, I mean, may Allah bless them, may Allah give them a lot of barakah and these big houses and big people with big cars, may Allah give them a lot of blessings, say Amin. Amen. But some of them, just like you and just like me, they haven't got peace. You can't buy peace, my friend. It's only Allah's giving. If He gives you peace, He gives you peace. Whether you're a rich man, you can't buy it. Whether you're a poor man, you can't buy it. If Allah gives you peace in your house, you've got peace. If not, you ain't got no peace. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tell us? He said, he said dunya kulluha mata'a. The whole world is full of, full of things that people own. وَخَيْرُ مَتَاعِ الْمُسْلِمْ الْمَرْأَةُ الصَّالِحَةِ Hadith of Muslim. He said the best, the best thing that a man can possess in this world is a woman who is righteous, who's pious. Not a, he didn't say a woman who's just, you know, so, so amazing to look at. That he has to, con he has to stop his eyes from coming at the sockets. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. He said, Al Mar'atu Saliha, a woman who's so pious. Now, you know what? You got a woman who's pious. Alhamdulillah, you know, all women are good looking and all women, men are good looking. Say Alhamdulillah, guys. Alhamdulillah. Seriously, all women are good looking and all men are good looking. You're looking at me thinking, Shaykh, come on. Come on. Come on. It's true. Everyone's good looking. In the eyes of whoever Allah puts mahabba, put love. Yes or no? If someone hates you, hates you, and if Allah, you know, He wants to kill you, He wants to literally just, just kill you, and if Allah drops love here, will He kill you, yes or no? No. I'll give you an example. Musa alayhi salam, his basket is on the, on the river bank. It's just at, the, at a tree, and it's on water. And Fir'aun has just sent his men out there. Any baby boy born there this year, kill him. Kill every single baby boy from the, from the children of Israel. Kill them all. And he's walking down his riverbank. And they said, he, Fir'aun don't need no excuse, no excuse to kill anyone. He's a man, he wants to kill someone there, and then he kills them. So his soldiers that are with him, his bodyguards that are with him, his wife that is walking with him, suddenly they see what? They see a small basket. And they bring the basket up and he looks inside and he sees a baby boy. You know what's going through his head? He's going to kill him. He's going to just kill this baby boy. Allah says what? وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي O oh Musa, you are in front of me and in front of this fire today where I'm talking to you. O oh Musa, there was a time when your enemy wanted to kill you, but I put inside him what? I put inside him love, love from myself, I put inside there. He therefore, he fell in love with you. The worst enemy falls in love with his, his enemy that's going to destroy his whole of his kingdom. If Allah wants to do that, guys, I'm telling guys, you might think, yeah, that no woman is going to really take me, yeah. One day, somewhere, someone's going to just look at you and say, yes, that, that's the guy. You say, huh, huh, me? Huh, me? Yeah, you. Because what? Where does Mahabba, where does Mahabba come from? 
Where did love come from? Tell me guys, where did love come from? Allah. Let me give you another scenario, guys. Some of you are not understanding this. I've seen guys here really good looking. I'm not, I'm not, I don't consider myself one of those here. I think I'm average. Alhamdulillah. Say brothers. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I've seen some guys here, literally, they just, they just like, they, they come out their door here, and there's girls like, they just can't take their eyes off them. All day. They know it. They know it. You know, a person who's beautiful, they know it. Because they walk here. They walk, even if it's a girl, yeah? She's walking down, yeah? And she don't, she don't need to look. You know, you've got this vision at the corner of your eyes, yeah? So they know. They, they've already seen them like 50 yards before. They've seen the guy. She thinks, nah, not him. So she's looking down, yeah? And that guy's looking at her. That guy's, that guy's like even turning his head like that as he's going, yeah? And she's like, I don't want you, Mr. Ugly. I don't want you, Mr. Ugly. Get it? And, and even, even boys do that. You know what happens? These boys, are, I know some boys here, yeah, they're like, they say, no, 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 no. So many beautiful, really nice girls that have proposals for him. And no, no, no. His age is getting higher, higher, higher. He said, no, not this one, not this one, not this one. He's probably rejected about 47. Seriously, 47, 48, 49. So forget it. And the 50th one, yeah, he says, you know what, before she even proposes, like, that's the one I want. That's the one, yeah? So all the other 49, yeah, they've just got on with their lives, they've just mar- married somebody else, whatever, yeah? This 50th one wasn't even interested in him. Do you understand? This last one, yeah, it's like, who are you? Now he's, he wants her. She's like, get on my back. Who are you? Don't want you. He's like, no, no, look how beautiful I am. And Allah hasn't put the mahabba love in there. Do you know what happens? She don't want him. Then you know what? He don't get married for several years just because, because of her. I've seen several guys like this. And then in the end, she gets married to some other guy and he's like heartbroken. Uh, uh. Now he's looking for the other 49, yeah? They're all married, they've got kids. You know my friend, mahabba love is from Allah. This all this whole system is from Allah. You know, if somebody, if you met somebody for the business trade, who made them meet you for the business trade? Who? Take his name. Who? You think you can ever can find? Even if you got all the, there, there are guys. Tell me this, yes or no? Some guys they've got all the degrees. They've got the ace A's. They've got the A stars. Or they've got the college degrees. They've got the university degrees, and they're applying to four hundred jobs, but they still can't get a job. Yes or no, guys? Yes. If Allah doesn't want to give it to you. He won't give it to you. Some other guy, he don't even know how to run a business. Allah gives him money. Yes or no, guys? This is Allah's doing. So, don't, we don't look at yeah, our matrices. We don't look at this whole world and see, you know, that guy made money, that guy's got this. Now, if I do the same thing, yeah, yes, that's fine. Look, if you've got to take up the means in this world, fine. But it doesn't mean that you will become as successful as any of these guys. Why? Because Allah holds the keys to the unseen. Allah said in the whole Quran, وَعِنَّهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا And in Allah's hands, Allah has what? Allah has all the keys to the unseen world. All the keys. Allah Azza wa has the keys to the entire unseen world. And what that means is that only through Allah you can get something. Now what, what am I saying with all of these girls and cars and drugs? What, what am I trying to say to you? is that most of the guys in this world who lose themselves in the matrix of this world is shaitan makes them believe in the present without them looking into the future. Let me sum it up for you guys. Guys, understand this quite, quite carefully because I'm going to tell you what real intelligence is. Real intelligence is not just passing an exam. Real intel- intelligence is not just to become a successful man. You've got no iman here and you're so successful like Rasulullah told us. Real iman is not that. What is, real, what, what is real success? What is real intelligence? Real intelligence is a man who can look at the past and the future, assess it properly and know where he is. So what do I mean? Allah says in the Holy Quran, He says, for example, and this is a whole section where Allah has mentioned 15 things in the Quran, all one after the other. 15 things in the Quran Allah mentions and after that He says, ذَلِكَ مِمَّا أَوْحَى إِلَيْكَ رَبُّكَ مِنَ الْحِكْمَةِ This is wisdom which your Lord has inspired to you. Wisdom. This is now a wise man. This is a real intelligent man. What is that? Listen to this. I'm not going to go through all 15. I'm just going to give a few of them. Guys, are you okay to, for me to carry on? Yes. I can see you're awake, yeah? Yeah, you know, yeah? Inshallah. 
Don't worry, I won't make it too long, yeah? Allah says what? Allah says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا A man with real intelligence, a woman with real hikmah and intelligence and wisdom, what will they do? They see their parents or one of their parents who is old. Allah says, إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا You are individual who's reading this Qur'an, you find one of your parents, or both of your parents, they reach old age. Don't dare approach them, or in any way say, Uff, uff, ah, ah, uff. Don't even say that. Forget beyond that, don't even say that. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا don't, don't try and rebuke them. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And when you speak to them, speak to them with gentle words. Why? Allah says, وَخْفِضْ لَهُمْ آجَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ A man with wisdom, a woman with wisdom, intelligence inside them, they will keep their hands down in humility in front of their parents. Who are you standing in front of? Who are you standing in front of? Allah says this, وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا Say out of your heart that my Lord, my Lord, have mercy on both of them, just as they nurtured me and they brought me up when I was young. This is hikmah. Oh Allah, I now realize, I look in the past and I see that I have no existence without these parents. I'd be disabled if one of these parents wanted to twist my arm and break my legs if I, when I was small. I'd be a person who'd be totally gone if they wanted to suffer me, suffer me and suffocate me or put me through malnutrition. If, if the parents didn't decide to feed you or feed you properly, what would happen? Oh Allah, just as they nurtured me young, that's the past. I also see that there's a moment when I will become old. When I will become feeble, when I will become weak, when I will need the care of others, and who better to get care of than my own children. Oh Allah, the cycle of life with the past and the present, I realize that and that's why out of humility, even if I, dis even if I disagree with my parents, even if I disagree with them, I will not hurt them. Why? Because I don't want the same to be done to myself. This is wisdom. I recognize the gifts of them all my life till this point, and I recognize what I, what I will be tomorrow at old age, and that's wisdom. This is real intelligence. A man or a woman who can look at the past and present, who can assess the entire situation properly. Listen to another one. You know, I, just before I get on to this, you know today, subhanAllah al kids, kids sometimes, they just, they just don't know what they have until they lose it. Guys, put your hands up, anyone here who's lost one or both of your parents, put your hands up. Keep your hands up if you lost both of them. There's only about five of us in this room out of a hundred or whatever that is sharing this. La ilaha illallah. The pain that you will suffer at the time of the death of your parents, especially your mother, it is nothing like that you've ever experienced in your entire life. You know why? Because the one who gave you life and birth, the one in whom you lived and you lived off, the one without whom you would have no love in your heart, the mother's given you so much love in your heart. When that piece of humanity of yours rips away from you for good, it is very painful. So before that happens to you guys, your parents, just do the best of looking after them. Because trust me, when they've gone, you will cry. And not only cry, you will cry, some of you will cry uncontrollably. And I've seen grown-up men in janazas, that they, they, they just can't control themselves. Grown-up men, businessmen, couldn't control themselves. And the only thing on their mouth is what? I wish, I wish I had said this to her. I wish I had done this for her. I wish I did this and so on. So if you want to have wisdom, this is wisdom. Allah says what after that? 
وَاتِذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْذِيرًا I want you, O Muslims, to start spending on those who are close to you. Give to the orphans, give to the needy. Why? Why give to the orphans? Why give to the needy? Because guys, whatever we have today is from who? Tell me. From who? The money in my pocket is from who? Take his name, Allah. The money tomorrow I will get will be from who? The money yesterday I got is from who? If I know the past and future and the present and all of that, and I assess everything, I won't be scared to give. I'll give, I'll give. But what does Allah say? Allah says, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَبْصُطُهَا كُلَّ الْبَصْطِ Don't be so stingy that you put both of your hands towards your neck and you don't want to give anything at all. And don't be so generous that you open both arms wide. Hey, take my money. Yeah, yo, yo. That's not wisdom. Stinginess, no wisdom. Being open, so generous, you give everything, not wisdom. You have to assess everything. Assess your family, assess your future, assess your own, your own needs and necessities. And give to those who are in need. That is wisdom, that is what Allah teaches us. And Allah says, وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْذِيرًا Don't waste. Don't just waste, just because you've got abundance of wealth, don't just waste it. In fact, our Sharia has said when you've got water and you're doing wudu with it, don't use more than you need. Even if you're at a river or a whole stream that is flowing with water. Why can't I, why can't I waste water when the stream is flowing with water? When I know there's so much abundance. No, not even then. Why? Because if you know, if you know, and if you look around and you weigh everything, the Allah that gave you water can take the water away. And there are many in the world that don't have the water. So show that Allah that you appreciate what you've given. That's what it's about. And Allah says what? وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشْيَةَ إِمْلَاقُ By the way, this is Surah Isra or Surah Bani Israel. I'm reading from ayah number, Surah Isra is Surah 17, ayah number 23 onwards. Now I've reached ayah number 31. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشْيَةَ إِمْلَاقُ Don't kill children because of the fear of poverty. Why guys? Today, do you know what? A real crisis today in the Western European world is a population crisis. Do you guys realize that? There's not enough. In many of these countries, there's not enough being produced. And the problem gets worse. Because these brown people and outsiders and foreigners come and every year they're getting a kid. Durum darum, durum darum, durum darum. I just saw you miss last year with another one. Yeah, 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 another one. Hey. Come in hospital, go out of hospital, come in hospital, go out of hospital. I'm not trying to say, guys, that this is the, this is the you know, what I'm trying to say, you know, you know, one thing that I need to say here is, Muslims, some Muslims, seriously, because they're getting so educated, because you live a life that is so splendid, and you need to have a life where everything is measured, Right down to your Sunday roast. And you must make sure that you only have children that are just enough for you. One must think like this to have a wonderful, superb life. So you should end up with either one child or two. And dare I say that two might be too much. Some Muslims, yeah? Seriously, some Muslims are stopping at two, and some stop at one, and some say like, should we have one? And some, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Now the new generation, I'm being serious about this, yeah. The new generation is like, why do I get married, man? Why should I get married? Got everything I want, isn't it? Got everything I want. Got my TV, got my technology, got my car, got my job. Got everything in it, I've got everything in it. Got my phone, got my flat, I pay for my bills, after my rent, and when I want to go and see here, right, I just go out in it. She enjoys myself, she enjoys herself. We go cinema, we go dinner, we go dating, whatever. We come back here, yeah? she goes to her flat, I go to my flat, in it. Sorted. <laughs> not arguing with her, she's not arguing with me. 
you know, we just see you and we like to see, like, so, so, it, yeah, doesn't matter, I'm 35 years old, I'm like, you know, so what, I ain't got no kids, so what, who wants to look after them anyway? They poo all over the place, you know, like, they got a bog is coming out, they got, you know, I want to clean them and, you know, like, listen to all of that, you know, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, too much, too much talk, too much, too much crying, I want to get a good, nice rest, you know? Seriously, some guys, you know, I, I'm being serious about this, so you might think I'm just sitting here on the mimic just having a laugh with you on a Saturday night, yeah? I'm not. Listen to this, yeah? 20 years ago, when I used to do nikahs, the average age on a nikah certificate used to be 21, 22 years old, around there. 15 years ago when I started to do nikahs, it was about 24, 25 years old, the average age. 10 years ago I did nikahs, it's, it's happened to move, shift to about 26 years old. 5 years ago I, I do nikahs and now the average is shifting towards 26, 27. Today I'm doing nikahs and the average age is now 29, 30. Average age. I'm being serious about this. A lot of nikahs I'm doing, the average age is shifting towards that. And you know what now? Parents are coming to me and saying, Please explain to them. I'm thinking, what? Please explain to them. I'm thinking, what? They don't want to do nikah. And my advice to you all you parents is this. When they wanted to do nikah, yeah, when they were desperate to do nikah, you had five, ten excuses for them. You said, who said you get married right now? Huh? You got three brothers older than you. You wait in the queue. You're only 18. What do you know about life? Only 18. He was desperate. He found someone. And this is what you said to him. Then he waited in the queue. But you never, <laughs> you never seen the other side of the story. His big brother was messing around. He just didn't want to, you know, he had a girlfriend and the other one had a girlfriend. And you know that this happens in families, man. Don't, don't look at me like that. Yeah, you know it happens. And Imams don't want to say this on the member. I'm going to say you straight. Why? Because the, you know it's going on. And then they have all of this double life. And then in the end, what happens is one of them ends up getting too old. But what does he do when he's desperate? Well, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. He's already tasted, tasted the secrets of life. He's already tasted that in a haram way. Na'udhu billah. He's tasted it a few times. Then you told him what? When he came again and he wanted to get, he said, you want to get married now? No, no, no. no. They're going to ask for your CV. Now they need CVs for marriages. You guys laughing at me. Yeah? You guys have to send CVs to each other for marriages, isn't it? What's this man? You're getting a job or something? Seriously, families are sending CVs to another. Yes or no, guys? Tell me this. Yes or no? Yes or no, guys? It's like, what, you're getting a job or something? No wonder, you know, they, they, they treat you like corporate. Yeah, but my days, alhamdulillah, no CV, brother. You don't know what CV was those days, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, they want CV. Your CV now, say, you got no, no job. So you go get a job. So a guy gets a job, then he comes back, he wants to get married. He says to you, you know, papa or mama, you know, I need to get married. So no, you see, we're gonna say you got no, no, no investment. Put investment, put in flat. Then you're ready. Nice times another five years. Try and get his flat. By this time, yeah, the guy's like, you know, he's lost half his hair, brother. He's got, he's got on here Heathrow Airport. <laughs> he can land a plane on this. He's lost half his hair. And then you turn around to him at 30, 31, and say, okay, better. Okay, now the three brothers are all married now. Now your turn. Oh, you got a nice, nice degree. And you got nice uh, investment. Nice job. Everything's secure. Now you get married. He's like, marriage? Really? Really? What about Jane? What about Jane? What am I going to do with Jane? You understand? The guy's already in some other world. He's not going to say that to his parents, obviously. Yeah? He's just in his mind. Yeah, guys. Come on, cheer up, guys. He's like thinking, what's, what's going to happen with Jane? I forget that, he hasn't even talked about Lucy yet. You know what I'm saying? The guy's doing it to her. And now you talk about marriage. And guys, you better, you know, I'm telling you, forget Jane and Lucy. There might be some other name that you might be surprised to hear that name. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to go any forward yet. Yeah? You might hear the itter. You understand? 
So what I'm trying to say to you now is, you, you find all this has happened with what? what? Because the cycle's broken, people have all sorts of thoughts. Now these guys, young guys, young girls, when they, when they get together, sometimes they're aborting the children. Allah has said in the Holy Quran, sometimes parents are not even having children, they don't want children because they fear poverty. They kind of, they're sitting there with the calculators and they're thinking, man, we're living on this. What are you doing? Your wife. Listen to that, I'm going to give you this advice here. There's some people out here, they think, you know what, you can take a degree and a business and all that, yeah, and a job and security to just get your wife. Did Allah tell you that? Or did Allah's messenger say that in, in a rounded way, not in exact words, but in a rounded way, that your wife or any individual brings their own risk? They bring their own provisions. Yes or no, guys? You know, before marriage, you weren't that prosperous and she wasn't that prosperous. And when you get married, Allah puts barakah together and then you both start, suddenly you start getting things coming towards yourself. And each kid that comes, they bring their own risk with them. Yes or no, guys? They bring it. Alhamdulillah, it works. Okay, I'm not telling you to have a full, you know, squad, you know, like football team of 22, yeah? If you want to have that, guys, that's fine, yeah? It's up to you now, no, no offense, yeah? But what I'm trying to say is that you, you got to have something that, you know, a healthy sort of life where you don't fear for this reason. And what did Allah say? He said, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشًا Don't even go near zina. Don't go near it. Because it's obscene. Now the guy sees what, the girl sees what, that they just want to be with each other. Why? Why guys? Guys, look at tomorrow. Today is when they're committing their act, then Allah makes the iman come out of their heart. It hovers above them while they're doing the act. And then it will come return inside them when they're finished. And tomorrow they will be burning, burning in pots where the fire is inside in hellfire. This is from our tradition, from ahadith, accepted ahadith in Bukhari, an authentic ahadith. And if they give up the relationship, an illicit, uh, illicit relationship, if they give that up, then Allah Azza wa Jal will give them what? Allah will call them on the day of judgment and call them under his arsh. And Allah will say, come under my th the shade of my throne. There is no other shade except for this day, shade on this day. Allahu Akbar. If they give up the illicit relationship, or if they have nikah, and they get married, then Alhamdulillah, then brother, go, Bismillah. You know, Bismillah, the world is yours. Bismillah. Every time he sleeps with her, he gets reward for it. This is in hadith. So this is seeing the past and the future. And Allah has said one thing for the believers to think about. He says what? وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتْ the final matter, the final consequence will be for those who used to be aware of me. You want to see today, you got a beautiful girl. Tomorrow, you, you're going out and dating her. Next thing you know, you're loving it. You're flying across the world. You're going to hotels with her. You're going to dining places with her. And she's going with you. After that, what happens? Eventually, you get old, she gets old. Don't tell me you're going to be like 40 years old and she's going to be 14 years old and you're both going to still be doing all this stuff. No way! No, no, your mind will be different. You look at 40 year olds, when you hit that age, you're going to be different like them. You look at 30 year olds, when you hit that age, you'll be like them. When you get 50, you'll be like them. You're thinking, oh, these, these uncle, uh, uncle don't understand me. But you know, when you get to that age, you'll be like uncle. Because your mind becomes like that with age. You'll become like that. And the whole point is what? That if you look at the future, what was that girl today? When you were 20s, in your 20s, you dated that girl, and the girl dated you, and you did it in a haram way. You could have had nikah in a halal way, but you decided to go with a haram way. What happened in the end? Well, she's a buddhi now. Yes or no? Your buddha, she's buddhi. Your old man, she's old woman. You smile, and half your teeth are missing. She smiles. Mars and all the teeth are missing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's it. That's life. Yeah? What was the point of all of that? Now look at Aqiba. Then you go to your grave, she goes to your grave. You wake up on the day of judgment, she wakes up on the day of judgment. Then, now judgment. That's hikmah. Don't go near zina. Because it's going to lead. Allah says, It will lead to an evil path. 
The guy who's selling drugs or whatever, if he sees the future, he'll see that there's corruption. All the guys who've gone into drugs, there's corruption ahead. Either they ruin their body, they will ruin the body of others, or they get into a mess with some financial matters and they start killing each other or shooting each other, or they start just messing each other with gangs and so on. This happens with all of them. Nobody has gone into the world of drugs without coming out with some issues, some serious issues. The guy who wants to have a life quickly to, to cut this one's wealth and cut that one's wealth, Allah talks about it. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا لَلْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Someone's wealth, don't touch it without ha- having the best means, best intentions to touch it. Guys, I'll finish, finish by half nine, I'm finished here. Yeah? So seven more minutes, inshallah. You want to make quick money? You don't see the end of it. La ilaha illallah. This money that you just took, this good you took, do you know that a hadith of Muslim says that you will be on the day of judgment, that item will be tied around your neck? Some guys of this age want to take small items. Some big guys will get adults. What do they want to do? They want to take someone's land. They want to take property. They want to take property. Some, some people, I know what they do. They, basically, they're going to make a, a, a fence in the garden. Yeah? They're going to redo their fence. Yeah? They tell the builder, hey, hey, psst, come on. Psst. Just move it, move it a few inches this way. Yeah? I've got a bigger garden. Yeah? So he moves the post when he builds it a few inches that way. Your neighbor's probably complaining. He says, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm sure he was there. It's a, I'm sure he was there. You took a piece of land, even qayda shibrin. Prophet said, even to the to the extent of one span's length. You know what happens? Any item or anything you took, what happens? Tuwika bihi on the day of judgment, Allah ties it around his neck. Then Allah lifts him up to the height of the seventh heaven. Then Allah drops him with that thing around his neck that he stole from this earth from the seventh heaven onto the platform of the day of judgment. From the seventh heaven height, there's no real seventh heaven then because Allah has broken everything, but seventh heaven height to the day of judgment Allah drops him. You see that and you know that you don't want to take anyone else's wealth. La, 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 la. If it's halal, it's yours, it's yours. If it's not haram, just leave it. Amana, it's a trust of somebody else. Allah talks about it in the Holy Quran. There's some people that want to hide things when they, when they want to sell them to others, quickly just sell it on. But when they take from others, they want to check it properly. Yeah, check the bonnet, check the tires, check the, check the history, check the back, check the paint. Yeah, check if all the electrics are working. Yeah, check the speed, check the rev the engine, rev the engine, probably, yeah, 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 yeah. When you want to take it, you check every detail of it. Do the HPI check. Yeah? Look at the data history. Go on, let's, let's check this. Let's check it. That's fine. But when you want to sell it, there's some brothers like this. It's like, don't worry, don't worry. It's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, 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 it's fine, it's fine, don't worry. Then you sprayed it, you sprayed it, and you hate this, and you hate that. Allah talks about it in the whole Quran and says, not good. Why? You've got accountability. You look at the end, you've got accountability. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِنْ There are certain things that you don't know of, just say, I don't know it. Just be humble. You don't know it, be humble. Ayah number 26 of the surah. Because everything that your ears, the inna sam'a wal basara wal fu'ad, what your ears have taken in, what your eyes have taken in, and what your heart has taken in, all of that will be questioned in the Day of Judgment. That's, that's now thinking about the future. Any guys sitting here who've done something wrong, just do tawbah to Allah, repent to Allah. And if you've taken something from somebody else, you just try and return it back. If you can't return it back, they're gone from this dunya, whatever, try and give some sadaqah on their behalf. May Allah accept that and may Allah you know, through that forgive you as well. Okay? And then in the end, well, there's one last one and then I'll give you the hikmah part. Ayah number 37, Allah says, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَ Don't walk on the earth like... You know, you own the land. Yeah. Whose land is this man? My dad's. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Was your dad King Arthur? Oh yeah. So they walk like, you know, as if like, yeah, you know, you want to walk? You walk by the side. Can't you see who's coming? Innaka lan al ard. Allah says, you're walking like that. You can't even rip the earth with the feet beneath you. You can't tear the earth. What are you trying to prove? 
walan tablugh al-jibal tul and you trying to show the how big you are <laughs> you're nothing compared to my mountains allah says if you want to see who's big you can see who's tall who's great who's powerful who's super just look at one of my creation the mountain walan tablugh al-jibal tul don't do that why because if you look at the end of it the one who has kibr and arrogance inside him he will not be able to enter jannah <coughs> until allah somehow forgives him or gets rid of the jan rid of the um, kibar and the arrogance inside him what does that mean that means he may have to go and burn in hell fire just to get rid of the arrogance so a person looks at the end and then allah says dhalika mimma awha ilayka rabbuka min al hikma these are these this is all these things allah said this is what your lord has inspired to you of wisdom now you're wise you're not just intelligent you're wise a wise man a wise woman takes everything in consideration and they look into they they look into where it's going where am i going that's a wise man the quran says fa'ina tathabun where are you going this is a wise question to answer what's going to happen tomorrow if i stay with these friends What's going to happen tomorrow if I carry on if I'm going to go to a good way alhamdulillah let me increase these friends if I'm going to go to a bad way because of these friends then you better you better start thinking where you are right now shaitan's matrix works exactly the opposite he just looks at the present she's so beautiful ma if i just got her all my troubles will be gone that's it that's it. ah ah all my troubles are going to be gone Man that money there that wealth there if I just got that oh I could buy this I could buy that he just thinks about it it makes you think about the present if I had that if I had what this guy's got in terms of quick money quick time selling drugs and getting the time then I can have all the girls and cars and all that you know for myself quick time material things he he uses material things and he makes you see that go for that and the quran says zuyyina lahum zuyyina zuyyina lahum su'u a'malihim zuyyina lahum lahum these these things are they're ornamented in front of the eyes it glitters like gold oh i really want that oh i would enjoy that it's a present shaitan wants us to believe in the present in material things and his matrix is that he fools you in not thinking about the future and allah's way is he wants us to think about now the past and especially the future and when you weigh everything up and you see what you're doing then you become a wise person to say should i or should i not do this thing this is the matrix of the believer the matrix of the believer or the way that we look on the world is that we never see the world again the same way because this man that is sitting there and that man that is sitting there he's allah's servant He's Allah's servant. He's Allah's servant. They're all Allah's servants. This is the matrix of the believer. Allah gave him gifts. Allah gave him gifts. Allah gave him gifts. Allah gave me gifts. Allah gave him deficiencies. Allah gave him deficiencies. Allah gave him deficiencies. Allah gave me deficiencies. Do you understand? This is the believer. Allah blessed him today. May Allah bless him tomorrow. Allah will bless me tomorrow. Allah has blessed me today. This is how we see things. and i see the world how every cell of this human being every brain cell of his every ligament of his every part in his body every bone in his body every piece of flesh in his body his heart his liver his lungs his spleen his kidneys all of that are under whose control tell me whose control allah's control his brain is under allah's control his body is allah's control as in he can do what he wants right now fine but if allah will something then he can't stop it and he can be in trouble with his lungs right now but if allah wills then he can cure it just like that yes or no yes. that's the matrix of a belief that's the belief and with me if there's anything wrong the same way allah can cure it any time and if there's anything good with me allah can take it any time so we have hope and fear all the time this is the matrix of the believer the shaitan either puts you gives you hope because he wants you to sin or he gives you fear because you might start worshiping allah and becoming religious he works the other way ash shaitan ya'idukum al faqr wa ya'murukum bil fahsha quran says shaitan shaitan tries to tries to make you scared of scared of what that you might become poor if you start donating money That's shaitan's way. Wa ya'murukum bil fahsha and he tells you quickly to go and do something which is obscene. That's shaitan's way. This is shaitan makes. So, anyway, I'm going to sum up the whole whole talk right now. 
And Jazakumullah khair brothers for sitting this this long on a Saturday night. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless this for us. My brothers, my, my young brothers especially and, and others as well. My young brothers, my young sisters, wake up. You know, life is goes so fast, so fast. Honestly, Wallah, you just look behind you think you think five years just gone like that, ten years just gone like that. And there's no don't don't try and do anything today that you will regret tomorrow. How do you stop that? How do you stop yourself? My brothers and sisters who are listening, the only way to do it is a person gets to know what the Sharia is, gets to study the, the Quran and the Sunnah, whatever course you can go to do that. And second thing with that is you need to start remembering Allah more and more. The more dhikr of Allah you do, the more you remember Allah, the more the heart gets softened and then you start seeing the true matrix that you're supposed to see, the true belief that you're supposed to have. May Allah Azza wa Jal make it make it a fruitful life for me and a fruitful life for you. Say, Ameen. Jazakumullah khair. Wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillah.